Hey guys, this is the Investors Channel, and today I'm going to talk to you about six myths about money. Number one, all debt is bad. That's not true. There's a difference between good debt and bad debt. Bad debt would be when you borrow money to buy stuff that you don't need, like Gucci belts and large flat screen TVs. However, good debt is when you're leveraging other people's money to grow your own money. For example, if you take a loan from the bank and buy a house as an investment property, that's good debt because that house it becomes an asset and whoever lives in the house, the tenant, will be paying you every month for it. So you increase your cash flow and tenants help pay for the loan by giving you rent money. And once you get rid of the loan, then all that cash flow, except for the common charges and taxes, is yours. So good debt increases your net worth and cash flow. Money myth number two. It's not worth saving if I can only contribute a small amount. That is absolutely not true. Every dollar you put into your individual account, Roth IRA or traditional IRA, is worth it. Think about every time you drink coffee, maybe you spend one to three dollars. Let's say, okay, let's say you spend one dollar a day on coffee. Instead of buying coffee, if you save that dollar every day for a month, then at the end of the month, it becomes thirty dollars that you just saved. And if you save a dollar, every day for 10 months straight, then you save $300. It's a good amount of money to start off with to put in your individual account or Roth IRAs. You can still buy some shares with 300 bucks. Also, you, <clears throat> some of you guys might be saying it's not enough money or I don't have money. Guys, you have money. It's what have you been doing with it? As they say, it's not how much you earn is how much money can you hold on to. Also guys, when you get your paycheck, pay yourself first. That means out of the paycheck you get, you already allocate a certain amount to your investing accounts. Whatever you have left over, you pay for your expenses and uh, leisurely activities. Myth number three, credit cards should be avoided. Um, so that's actually debatable. For some people, if they have an overspending problem, then yeah, they may want to avoid credit cards. But if you can spend cautiously, keep note of every expense and how much money you have, then depending on your card, if it's a cashback card, you can get some of that money back. Some people also prefer points. And you can use it for free travel, like when you visit your relatives. Anyways, guys, I'm going to link a video down in the description on how to make the credit cards work for you. Myth number four. The stock market is too risky for my retirement money. Maybe you find stocks a bit risky. So in that case, you can invest in index funds, which don't go bankrupt. They, they don't go to zero, like S&P 500. The reason why they don't is because the best companies to invest in are in the index fund. And any time when the companies don't become as great of an investment anymore, they get removed from the index fund. Sure, you guys might have to pay a fee for the index funds, but they're much better than savings accounts because you will earn more than the interest rate in the bank. And also, guys, there's risk in everything in life. By not investing, you're also taking a risk. You're taking the risk that your job might not be available in the future. Maybe your maybe a recession happens and you lose your job. You're taking chances that that won't happen. But how can you be so sure? That right there is a huge risk. A bigger risk than investing in the stock market or real estate. Money myth number five. I'm too young, so I don't need to start saving for retirement now. Well, the sooner you save, 
the better. The sooner you open your IRAs, traditional and Roth, the better. Because think about it. As you get older, when retirement age approaches, would you rather have more money or less money? Also, if you start young, you'll have more time for your money to work for you and start compounding in the form of dividends. You buy sh shares of a few conservative companies and they pay you a dividend and that dividend can build more over time if you start at a younger age versus if you start at an older age. However, guys, if you are a bit older, that's not an excuse either because if you start investing now, then you'll have more money than you would have had if you didn't invest at all. And guys, I want to take a look at an example together that illustrates my point. Marley starts contributing $7,000 per year for 30 years at age 35, while Beatrix contributes $15,000 a year for 20 years, but starts at age 45. Now, even though Marley's yearly contribution is less than Beatrix, he still has more money at retirement age because of the compounding dividends. So now Marley has $50,000 more than Beatrix. Myth number six. There's no way to know how much money you'll need until you're in retirement. True, very true. However, once retirement approaches, would you rather have more money or less money? Sure, there is expenses that you can't really account for. Unexpected expenses occur, yeah, that's true. But the more money you have, the better you'll be able to protect yourself in times of uncertainty. Anyways, guys, some of these myths that people use as excuses for why not to invest are actually reasons why you should invest. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think of these myths. Do you have another myth? If I can get many more myths in the comments, maybe I'll make a part two. If you like this video, please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe with bell notifications so you never miss out on another video, comment letting me know if you have any questions or concerns, and share. Once again, this is the Investor's Channel.